Our speaker for today is Professor Astrid Epine. She's the chair uh, of European uh, law, international law and public law, uh, and the managing director of the Institute for European Law and the rector of the University of Fribourg. Um, she uh, became the first female rector of that uh, eminent university in 2015 and has been awarded many honors for her seminal work on European law um, and her teaching and publishing in this field. And this afternoon, she will focus her uh, lecture on the relationship between Switzerland and the European Union, slightly provocatively uh, uh, labeled 120 agreements but no perspective, question mark. Over to you, Professor Apine. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, the introduction. It's a real pleasure to be with you. I, I would have preferred to, to come really to Cambridge, but uh, that will be for uh, the next time. Uh, and uh, so I'm very happy to, uh, uh, to give this uh, speech about relationship Switzerland-European Union. It's a complex relationship, which is uh, rather different from the problems, or if I, if I may, uh, uh, um, as concerns the Brexit or the relationship between uh, UK and the European Union. I'd like to uh, go forward in these five uh, steps, uh, a short introduction, the statu quo, uh, the uh, institutional agreement uh, who was not uh, concluded and the perspectives. I think there can be some perspectives, but we don't uh, we don't really see them yet, but uh, I hope this will uh, change. So uh, in uh, the point of departure was in Switzerland the 6th of December 92 rejection of the Europe, uh, the EEA. Uh, the Swiss people uh, didn't agree with this uh, agreement, yeah. and uh, and uh, the the question was was asked afterwards: How do we continue? The nineties were very difficult uh, for Switzerland uh, from economic point uh, of view. So Switzerland uh, tried very quickly to get in touch with the European Union to have some agreements in order uh, uh, to, um, if you want to compensate uh, the uh, non-participation on the European economic area. And uh, the bilaterals one, it was a package of seven agreements were concluded in 99, entered into force together or in, in zero two and concerned the, uh, the topics you see uh, here. Uh, most important topics are technical barriers to trade. This is a very important agreement for uh, the economy because it foresees uh, that uh, the uh, that products can uh, circulate between Switzerland and the European Union as uh, for a member state. Huh? It's a real participation on the internal market for products with recognition of uh, standards and of procedures. Uh, uh, for uh, products, very, very important. Agriculture research, very important for uh, universities. There we have some difficulties now, as the UK, uh, uh, public procurement, air transport, land transport, free movement of persons, very important also, but it's uh, uh, politically uh, highly uh, problematic for different, uh, different reasons. I'll come back to uh, this. Uh, in uh, uh, zero 04, there were the bilaterals two, uh, sorry, uh, it, it, it should be two, uh, another package of uh, agreements with uh, the subjects you see here, very important here, Schengen-Dublin, uh, so Switzerland is an associated uh, country from Schengen-Dublin as Norway or as uh, Iceland. Uh, it's uh, highly important uh, for Switzerland uh, because of its uh, geographic situation um, and also uh, because of the police uh, cooperation uh, in the framework of Schengen. 
there are some further uh, agreements, free trade agreement uh, from 72, uh, still very important, custom security measure or uh, Europol. Uh, they are also in the field of environment now, uh, participation at the emission trading uh, scheme. Uh, all in all, about to 120 or little more uh, agreements. Uh, for the most uh, uh, important of these uh, agreements, we have for these bilaterals uh, a sort of framework of public international law, classic public international law. Uh, we don't have any um, institutional uh, arrangements. Uh, we have uh, the, the, the representatives of the contracting parties when, when, when you are not, uh, then you don't agree with uh, a question of interpretation, for instance, you have to just to talk uh, with, uh, with the other party. And if you still don't agree, uh, it's like an international law, it's, you don't agree, full point. Huh? Uh, so uh, this is an, a little bit in contrast with uh, the uh, um, material contents of the bilateral, because the bilaterals, which, uh, uh, which concern the internal market, take over our European Union law. So if you, if you want, they copy European Union law, and they put it in international uh, agreement. So we have, for instance, in the land transport agreement or in the um, free uh, movement of persons uh, agreement, we have lists of secondary law regulations directive Switzerland has to, uh, has to apply. So that is a little contrast. And this is uh, the, the root of the difficulties which we have uh, now. So I'll come back to these uh, main characteristics to the institutional problems and the perspectives. So the main characteristics are Switzerland participates, and that is a contrast to the UK, in large parts of the internal market, free movements of persons, product, air transport, land transport, agriculture, and uh, the relevance of EU law and of EU uh, mechanism and interpretation is evident. Huh? Uh, the, uh, we have in the same time, in principle, a static character of uh, the agreements. Huh? So the agreements of 99, they copy uh, the uh, European Union law into the framework of the bilateral uh, agreements but at the state of uh, 99. Uh, EU law, of course, uh, develops uh, over, the, um, over the years. And there we have possibilities of development. Uh, the mix, the, the, the committee mixed, uh, they uh, can decide to take over a development of, uh, the, uh, of European Union law. But for this de decision, you have uh, uh, to, to agree uh, the two parties have to agree. So uh, one party, the European Union or Switzerland can say uh, this or this development, uh, we don't like it huh? in the uh, uh, framework of the bilateral agreements. And so we don't want to take, uh, to take it over. So uh, again, we have uh, integration agreements with methods of international law. Huh? So, the European Union uh, agreed with this um, contrast in, 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 in some way, also because the bilateral agreements were thought uh, in the 19th as a sort of transition uh, in the direction of, an, uh, uh, of the Switzerland as uh, EU, an EU member state. We had uh, till a few years ago, we had uh, uh, the, the aim of uh, the Swiss politics was to join the uh, European uh, Union. And uh, since perhaps uh, zero, yeah, since perhaps uh, 15 years or 10, 10, 15 years, it has become clear that uh, joining the European Union is not really realistic. And so the European Union said, um, if this is uh, the case, we don't uh, agree anymore. 
to have uh, these integration agreements, participa uh, particip uh, participation of Switzerland at the internal market as a member uh, state with methods of international law without institutional uh, mechanism. So uh, first in 2008, uh, the European Union formulated very clearly that they want to uh, uh, agree on these institutional questions and to conclude an agreement on the four questions you have uh, here, uh, the dynamics and the development of, of uh, law, so a sort of obligation uh, to, to develop, um, uh, to take over the, uh, uh, the European uh, Union uh, law, which is newly adopted, uh, a parallel interpretation of uh, the European Union law integrated in uh, the bi bilateral agreements supervision and, of course, dispute settlement. Huh? Because we have uh, uh, two or three questions where the European Union is of the opinion that Switzerland does not uh, respect uh, the bilateral agreements, and Switzerland is of the opinion that it uh, it is in conformity with uh, uh, the obligations uh, out of the bilaterals. These institutional questions, in my opinion, are also very important for Switzerland and are also in the interests of uh, Switzerland. The actual uh, the the present situation is, uh, is a very good illustration for uh, for that. Uh, because Switzerland is the smaller uh, part. Huh? And if you don't have institutional uh, uh, mechanism, if you don't have dispute settlement, what, what are you doing? You, you, you play together and uh, the, the strongest party will, uh, will be stronger. No? So uh, I, I think uh, this aspect is a little bit um, underestimated in, uh, in Switzerland. So uh, then uh, negotiations began about eight, nine years ago. Huh? And in, uh, at the end of 2018, a project of an institutional agreement was published. And uh, uh, this, uh, this institutional agreement uh, addresses uh, the questions I uh, mentioned uh, before. The scope was, only the agreements concern, concerning the internal market, the participation of uh, Switzerland uh, at the internal uh, market. Uh, so free movement of persons, air transport, land transport, agriculture, technical barriers to trade, not the free trade agreement. So uh, the European Union would have liked to integrate also the free trade agreement, but Switzerland uh, didn't want that. And so um, it was not uh, included. The main uh, findings of this project is that the principles of uh, the principle of uh, a parallel interpretation of uh, uh, the uh, contents of the bilateral agreements uh, if they take over European Union law, uh, including the interpretation, uh, of course, of the European Court of Justice. Uh, just um, remark. Also today, if you uh, read the rulings of the Federal Court of Switzerland, uh, the, the highest court of uh, Switzerland, uh, uh, and there was there there are now hundreds of rulings uh, about the um, agreement on free uh, free movement of persons. The uh, Swiss High Court. Uh, always uh, uh, applies uh, the uh, EU law interpretation of, uh, of this agreement. With the argumentation, uh, the uh, EU law is of course not relevant for Switzerland, but it was integrated in the free movement of persons uh, agreement with the, the explicit aim to have a parallel situation, legal situation, between uh, Switzerland and the European Union, uh, the same as between uh, uh, member states of the European uh, Union. And in this case, also international law uh, uh, interpretation rules, uh, they, 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 they um, you have to conclude that uh, there must be a parallel interpretation of these parts of the bilateral agreements. Though this uh, aspect is not really new, new but it's uh, really, it was uh, explicitly uh, formulated in the project of the institutional uh, agreement. 
For the second uh, important point, developments of uh, EU law uh, have to be in principle uh, taken over. So a dynamic integration. Uh, some, there are some exceptions, huh? uh, some um, aspects of uh, the, the wage uh, level or protection of, of workers. The Union Citizens Directive was not mentioned in uh, uh, the institutional agreement. So the big question would have been, uh, the European Union Citizens Directive, is that uh, a development of EU law which concerns the bilateral agreement on free movement of persons? If you have in mind that uh, this agreement of free movement of persons does not concern and does not take over the concept of European citizenship. So uh, in my opinion, this would have been very, uh, very difficult to, uh, to decide and uh, the uh, dispute settlement would have been of great relevance. So um, some articles on status, I, I let them aside now. Then dispute settlement. There was a mechanism in, in a two way, if, uh, if you want, uh, uh, an arbitration body uh, composed of three or five uh, persons. And this uh, body uh, could have been uh, or, or, or could, uh, could have been addressed by each party, only by each party, not by individuals. If uh, the uh, dispute uh, concerns European Union law taking over in the bilaterals, the arbitration body would have been obliged to ask the European Court of Justice how to interpret these rules in a procedure which is very close to the preliminary rulings uh, in uh, EU law. Uh, the uh, rulings of the uh, European Court of Justice would have been binding, uh, but there was uh, explicitly uh, foreseen a sort of escape clause if Switzerland or the European Union would not have been, uh, would not, uh, we would not agree with the ruling of the arbitration uh, body. Uh, that this would have been possible, but the other party uh, could have taken uh, compens compensatory measures, uh, and uh, which which uh, had to be uh, adequate uh, in the uh, in the present case. So uh, this uh, procedure is uh, a little bit political also huh? and leaves the possibility of political uh, solutions. So uh, what happened with this institutional agreements and I come to the perspectives, uh, the uh, federal council, the government decided in uh, uh, 2018 not to sign the project. Huh? Uh, the project was uh, titled with final version, huh? so the nego negotiations were uh, finished, huh? but the Federal Council uh, uh, decided to uh, have a sort of consultation discussion in Switzerland, and uh, at the end of this discussion in uh, summer uh, 2019, the Federal Council uh, communicate, uh, uh, wrote to the European Union uh, for us, uh, the project is okay, but we have questions for in three uh, areas, state ads, union, uh, union, European Union Citizens Directive and uh, protection of wages. Um, then there were a lot of discussions or uh, secret discussions also uh, between Switzerland and the European Union. And in Switzerland, uh, uh, pers uh, nobody knew really what, what was happened and what was really discussed between uh, the two parties. And uh, the, uh, a, a strong opposition uh, has, uh, there was a strong opposition uh, to this uh, institutional uh, agreement, uh, specifically uh, on the two points, uh, protection of wages, and uh, uh, free movement of uh, person. And uh, the, uh, this uh, 26th of May uh, 2021, the Federal Council decided 
to stop all negotiation on the basis of this uh, project. It was really a surprise for the European Union, I think. Uh, and it was, it's, it's very, very strange uh, to, 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 to stop uh, negotiations, to stop to, to, to speak about uh, a project which, which was neg negotiated uh, before. But the Federal Council uh, um, said very clearly, we don't want uh, to sign and to pursue uh, the uh, negotiation on this basis. The uh, European Union was not amused and uh, took a, a, a lot of measures which were announced before. Huh? The European Union was uh, always very, very clear. Uh, the European Union does not know, no more develop the existing agreements. This is very important for the agreement on technical barriers to trade, the MRA uh, uh, agreement. So the consequence is that, uh, pro, uh, that if the European Union law uh, changes in this area, which, is, uh, which was uh, the case last year for medtech products, huh? these medtech products can no more be uh, in, uh, exported into the European Union without uh, new uh, standards uh, recognition uh, and so on. So no uh, uh, access to the internal market uh, if there's a development of uh, EU law. It's MedTech, it was MedTech uh, last year. It will be machines next or a year or in, or in two years. No conclusion of new agreements. There is an, a, a project of an, an agreement in electricity, very important huh? also for the energy, uh, uh, the, the climate, uh, climate protection. No agreement health, huh? also very uh, important. And in other domains than the internal market research, some particip participation in uh, agency, the European Union uh, uh, has um, communicate, uh, communicate to, to Switzerland that the participation is no more uh, possible. For universities, it's uh, like in UK, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult because Horizon Europe is of course very important for uh, Swiss uh, universities. And the last consequence is that equi equi equivalence clauses, uh, sorry, for, uh, for instance, data protection, but there are a lot of uh, such clauses in EU law uh, and the EU, uh, the European Commission, can decide or not to recognize uh, this equivalence uh, from uh, in, in, in third countries. And we have, um, I think we, 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 we should be, we have to prepare that uh, the European Union will not uh, recognize, for example, data protection uh, level in uh, Switzerland as equivalent to the data protection level in the European Union. So, uh, all together, it's a erosion of the statu quo, no uh, access to the internal market, no legal security also, uh, political power play, and very important economic uh, consequences, at least in, uh, in a few years. So the situation is not really very funny. Huh? Future development, uh, what next, Tom? We don't know what the Federal Council uh, intends to, to do. No? The European Commission uh, has wrote to, uh, to Switzerland. Uh, Sef Sefcovic uh, is the, the European Commissioner, which is uh, competent for the relationship uh, with Swiss Switzerland, and uh, has, has asked Switzerland how, uh, how the Federal Council uh, intends to go on, and there is no uh, decision uh, yet. Uh, it seems that in the end of February, there will be another session of the government, and perhaps we'll see a little bit uh, more clear. So I think there are uh, uh, six possibilities the, uh, for the further development. Uh, first, statu quo. So we do nothing. If we do nothing, the existing agreements, of course, will uh, continue to exist. Huh? But uh, there will be that, that uh, erosion, uh, 
uh, the, 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 they will not uh, no longer uh, guarantee the uh, participation of the internal market because they are not adapted huh? and no uh, no future uh, agreement. So that will be very difficult. Development of the free trade agreement, huh? sort of UK solution. Huh? Uh, we don't uh, participate no longer in the internal market, but we um, have a free trade agreement, uh, a little bit uh, more developed than the agreement of uh, 72. Uh, for the Swiss uh, export industry, it will be very difficult. It is in another situation as the UK for a uh, number of, uh, of reasons. Uh, geography is one of the reasons, of course. Huh? Uh, Sec uh, third possibility, another institutional agreement. I don't know. I don't think that is political, uh, in internal poli politically uh, real, uh, realistic in Switzerland. Uh, adhesion, uh, joining the European Union or joining the uh, European Economic Area is not realistic uh, either. I think the only uh, possibilities are a sort of bilateral three, so that you uh, have a combination of institutional aspects, the same as in the uh, project of institutional agreement, because the, this aspect will not uh, disappear, uh, because uh, the Federal Council has said we don't want the project, huh? and material aspects as uh, electricity, health, or uh, other agreements where the two parties have a, a great interest. But uh, uh, the European Union will insist on the fact that uh, the existing agreements, uh, free movement of persons included, will be, uh, will, 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 uh, must be part of uh, the institutional uh, aspects. I think this is very, very sure in my uh, opinion. So the conclusion, so I respect uh, the, my 30 minutes, huh? uh, the, co the conclusion, uh, uh, in my opinion, the relationship uh, with the European Union is uh, very important for Switzerland. Uh, legal certainty is very important. I've heard from uh, economic players that they, uh, they think of uh, investing in the European Union, uh, not in Switzerland, because of this legal uncertainty. Um, the statu quo, in my uh, opinion, is not uh, a solution. And I think in Switzerland, we have uh, to uh, better understand the position of the European Union. The European Union also has a little bit better understand the position and the difficulties in Switzerland because we have also we have always uh, the obligation uh, to that these agreements are uh, uh, have to be uh, voted by the population so that's a, that is a different uh, situation as in uh, as in number of uh, other uh, other countries and so um, one point I didn't really understand uh, from the European Union why they were uh, so um, formalistic on the European on the European Union citizens uh, directive. Perhaps there um, some concessions uh, would have been possible. Um, the reaction of the European Union are not very friendly. No? So that's uh, I think that, that but they are a fact and international relationship are in general not very friendly. Huh? You don't have friends in international relations. You have partners, you have common interests, but you don't have friends. So uh, the really uh, uh, the perspective and also uh, the challenge is to, 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 to find a common uh, uh, terms of uh, understanding and common interests of the two uh, parties. And there's a real necessity of a clear strategy of the federal council. Uh, in, 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 in the end of at the end of the day, you have to, to make a balance of interests and an evaluation of risks. Is the risk of the actual situation, the present situation, is uh, is it higher than uh, the risk of a, a possible uh, institutional uh, agreement? And to 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 have to take over uh, some rules which are perhaps not so interesting for Switzerland. So it's really this balance of interest that the Federal Council has to operate, but uh, the Federal Council, seven persons, uh, 
the seven persons at the same level. Well, we don't have a prime minister. We don't have parties uh, either in the uh, uh, in the federal uh, council. And the set members of the government have to agree. Yeah? So this is a difficulty, and they don't agree in this very very important uh, topic. So uh, we'll see next what, uh, what will happen next. And from a legal point of view, uh, to, to end on a positive uh, note, uh, the bilaterals are very interesting because the question of interpretation is always a very complex question. And uh, in this way, in this sense, it's, it's always interesting and it will, be, it will continue to be of a certain actuality also. Thank you very much for your uh, attention.